I'm Julie, Faye Fan Balzer, and when I have artist block, I often turn to some of my favorite artists and their style. So Degas inspired this pastel transfer that I'm gonna show you how to do. I went to an exhibit of his beautiful pastel works, and one of the things that the curator told us was that the paintings that were next to each other had actually been accidentally created with a transfer. So I took that idea and I ran with it. So here's how it works. The first thing is you want to start out with some pastel paper. So you can get toned paper of all kinds and it comes in dark colors. There are also um, light colors, you know, like yellows and stuff like that. It's totally up to you what you wanna use. I'm gonna grab a dark piece. Now this is a little bit larger than I'd like to work with. So there are a couple different ways you can approach this. So a traditional way of working with paper and um, bringing it down to size is that you take a bone folder and you crease it and then you crease it in the other direction as well and then you should be able to just tear it right down the center and you get a kind of nice deckled edge. If tearing seems like something you're not comfortable with, I often use a ruler and a craft knife to cut it. It's totally up to you however you want to do it. The next thing is I like to work with a reference photo. It doesn't mean that I'm actually going to paint a picture or draw a picture of this. It just means it's an idea. Then I'm gonna pick my palette out. So I am gonna go ahead and use this desert palette. Now these soft pastels are basically kind of like you might think of chalk, but much more pigmented. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at my photo and because I'm using kind of a darker, more toned paper, I'm thinking about where are my highlights and my low lights. So maybe I wanna go with some of my darks first, like here are some nostrils, a little shadow around the nose. So again, I'm not actually drawing a face, I'm just kind of drawing objects that I see. The eye is actually just this sort of shape here. Um, over here, there's another little ball and maybe there's a shadow underneath here. And you're sort of thinking relationally inside the mouth, there's kind of a dark void. Um, and then the question is, where does my next color go? Well, this is still sort of a dark over here, but it's not as dark, so I've switched colors. And maybe here, kind of in the little ear, if I wanna get some of the light parts, I can come in and you can see how these soft pastels leave a lot of chalky residue behind and that's actually gonna be one of the major keys to how we're going to work this transfer. So I'm just continuing to kind of add my colorant, which is my pastel, wherever I see it and I can use the side to get a lot of color. That's one of the nice things about not having a wrapped pastel. Or I can use the tip to get something a little bit more precise. You can also layer and blend colors. And the reason that Degas loved to use pastels is because he was able to take his fingers and blend them and he was able to capture very quickly motion and ideas. And again, one of the keys is always that you're just drawing shapes. You're not really thinking so much about making a drawing of a face, so that should make it a little less intimidating to somebody who might be intimidated about drawing. In fact, it usually looks pretty funky somewhere partway through and you're wondering what's wrong and what are you doing, but you have to just keep respecting that all you're trying to do is get at what are some of the shapes and the contours that you see around here. In fact, some people say that you should turn things upside down so that you're really looking at shapes and not thinking about what the actual thing, object that you're looking at is. This is a common technique for making sure that you're paying attention to the things that you're supposed to. So you can just figure out and play around with it, just coming around and really covering maybe a lot of space all at once. And again, you're not trying to create a realistic portrait, you're just trying to get the some semblance of these different colors and these different shapes on board. Now, I do like to take a moment to really make sure that most of my surface is covered. So I will just keep coming in with different layers of colors and shapes to make sure that I'm absolutely getting this whole thing down so that it is separated 
nicely. And try not to get judgmental at yourself. I always tell people that a better skill than learning how to draw, a better skill than learning anything at that is learning to be okay with the art that you make, is learning to accept what you create and be you know, happy with it essentially. So I'm just gonna continue to work in playing around and I can pull from another set of pastels, maybe the highlights here to get some even lighter colors in there, some lighter tints, tones and shades to really make this whole thing come together. So once I have decided that my drawing is pretty done. I can decide how much I want to smooth things around. Look at how much you can blend that. How cool is that? Or you can leave it totally up to you. I honestly could play with this forever and ever, and sometimes I do. Then what you're gonna do is basically the way that Degas was able to transport his drawings, he did a lot of drawings of dancers, is he would take a piece of paper and sandwich it so that it wouldn't transfer. And one of the things he would often do is he would wet that paper. So here I am taking a wet sponge and I'm squeezing a lot of the water out of it. Then I'm going to moisten my paper, I want it damp, but I certainly don't want it soaking wet. And this is just a piece of a kitchen sponge. And what I'm gonna do, because this is actually something that Dega did, is he used to use damp paper to keep the um, pastel dust from flying everywhere, is he would then sandwich a piece of paper onto his drawing, hoping that the wet paper would keep everything from going all over the place. Now I'm gonna add a little extra pressure. He would put this, of course, away into his bag or his box and transport it home. But we're gonna rush the process a little and I'm using a brayer to do that. If you didn't wanna use a brayer, you could use a bone folder. You could also use a hotel room key or a credit card. But essentially what you're doing is you're transferring this drawing onto a second surface. And if we take a look, you can see I now have the same drawing, but in reverse. So this allows me now to create two versions of this image, which is super fun. So maybe this one is a little less realistic and this one could be a little more realistic or it could be maybe different colors. So I could take an entirely different color scheme. You know, here's one which is really brighter colors. So you can have fun with this, just playing around. So maybe I wanna give some playful rosy cheeks, smooth that around. You can also, I transfer to the same uh, color of pastel paper, but you could certainly transfer to a different color. But this is a really easy way to get two paintings for the price of one, so to speak, because you were able now to take what you originally did and play with it even a little bit more. Now let's say I wanna go a little bit abstract. I can do that. I can you know, make this a star man or whatever it is that I wanna do just by laying in color. And this is also a technique that keeps giving because I can of course take this drawing I'm working on right now and I can pay it forward, almost like a game of art telephone, where I can keep using it and transferring, transferring, transferring. So it's almost like you get to have a rough draft of your work and then you get to keep going. So let's talk a little bit more about working with pastels. One of the nice things about them, and I've always been a little bit scared because it has seemed like pastels are a medium only for fine artists. One of the nice things about them is that they're actually very forgiving. If you do something and you're not thrilled with it, your fingers are amazing tools for just blending it out, blending it out. And you can see how creamy that ends up being. The other thing is you may be amazed to see that even in an area that might be dark, you can, look how white that highlight is. You can absolutely brighten it up as much as you want, just like so. Isn't that cool? And then you can keep going and adding whatever details in that you want. And if you have something that you don't like, you just kind of rub it into the paper and then you can take another pastel and kind of knock it back. And you'll never even know that that star was under there, although I think it adds a little bit of texture. 
but you can come in and just add things and play around with it. Now, if I want, I can also work into the background so that you can play around with what's behind as well, which I think is nice. And you see how that nice textured paper comes right up? You can see that, you can see all the chalk. So let's show how this becomes a game of telephone for just a moment because I can transfer this again. So I have even um, some darker pieces of paper. Now you can see that baby wipes are a nice thing to have on hand because you do get your hands a little bit covered. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna squeeze some water and I'm going to wet this and I'm going to lay it right on top here of my face and I'm gonna roll the brayer over it. And this is how you start working in a series. And I think a lot of times that a series is a way that as an artist, you can explore many ideas all at the same time. I know that whenever I've worked on a series, it has really helped me to grow. And look how cool that is even on the darker paper. And you could just keep going. So I hope you will find some chalk pastels, give them a try. They're really lots of fun and easier to use than you think.